Before we begin, I want to offer a few words of gratitude. We appreciate you listening. We certainly love our fans. We also appreciate when you comment and rate us on platforms like YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Spreading your love about Steamy Stories not only helps others discover the show, but it also helps us grow and produce more episodes for you. So a big bro-ish bear hug to all of you for promoting Steamy Stories on social media and telling your friends about us. Sharing means caring, so keep it up. And thank you. Now, on with the show. Since childhood, Ethan has secretly admired the school's hunky star football player, with whom he was once close friends. However, after recently moving into his late grandmother's home, he became more reserved and shy. One day, while rummaging through the basement, Ethan stumbles upon an old book of love spells. He can't help but wonder if one of these enchantments will work on his sexy dream man. Can a simple incantation make the star quarterback fall in love with him? It seems that he'll find out tomorrow in gym class. It's October, and Halloween's soon upon us. That means goblins, ghouls, and the dark arts are around the corner. What better way to celebrate this month with a bit of witchcraft? If you're up for casting a hot hex with me, then I say let's whip out our magic wands and prepare to go all in this Halloween. They'll have lots of tricks and even more treats in this month's Steamy Stories. I'm Mark Montgomery, and this is Steamy Stories, written by J.C. Calciano, the podcast where bromance turns bromosexual. Ethan, a young man of quiet curiosity, resided in the quaint town of Maplewood. Now 18, his tall, toned physique stood out distinctly. His chestnut hair, wild and untamed, hinted at his quirky nature. But it was his deep azure eyes, alight with mischief yet profound, that truly captivated His infectious laughter and endearing smile promised both adventure and warmth. More than just handsome, Ethan was an irresistible blend of charm and mystery. Being the introvert he was, Ethan found solace in the comfort of his home rather than the athletic fields of his high school. His fascination lay in the hidden corners of the antiquated house his grandparents previously inhabited. Recently, he and his family moved across town to occupy his late grandmother's estate. Ethan always found her wonderfully odd, mystical, and enigmatic. Her home was no different. Now that it was his family's domicile, he was intrigued to investigate all the strange and wondrous items that filled its basement and attic. One rainy Saturday afternoon, Ethan ventured into the basement of the house. It was a labyrinth of forgotten objects and dust-laden shelves. The day was perfect for such an adventure, with the rain providing a rhythmic backdrop to his exploration. As he moved around, his attention was drawn to an old wooden chest tucked away in a neglected corner, partially concealed by a worn-out sheet. Intrigued, Ethan dusted it off and struggled to open the creaky lid, revealing a pile of assorted items, trinkets, old photographs, journals, and at the very bottom, he discovered an old, peculiar book. Was this a family heirloom? Perhaps this manuscript belonged to a long-lost relative from years ago. As soon as Ethan laid his eyes on the book, he could sense an unusual charm about it. Its leather cover was faded with time, the pages yellowed, and the words written in an elegant, looping script. The title read, Mystical Muses, Love Spells from the Ages. The book piqued Ethan's curiosity, 
and he began leafing through the delicate pages that claimed to contain spells for everything, from finding lost items to altering human emotions. Ethan, though not a believer in magic, found the concept intriguing and decided to give it a try. Amidst the spells about attracting good fortune and fostering friendships, he discovered one that particularly caught his eye. An incantation to make someone find you attractive. Ethan thought of Maddox, the handsome and charismatic jock from school, who was seemingly out of his league. Maddox was every bit the charmer, adored by all for his striking face and muscular, athletic body. He decided, half in jest, to cast the spell before him. He followed the instructions meticulously, whispering the arcane words into the silent, expectant air of the basement over and over while laying a photo of Maddox from the local sports gazette in a circle of salt as instructed. Luminar, Ethra, Vantus, Saren, Kalith. As he finished the chant for the last time, a slight breeze stirred, and the single light bulb that dangled from the ceiling flickered. Ethan felt a peculiar sense of exhilaration and a dash of hope, but also he couldn't shake off a sense of silliness. It was just a ridiculous old book wasn't it? Nonetheless, Ethan decided to take it to his room for further exploration. The basement's adventure had ignited a spark within him, and he couldn't help but wonder what tomorrow might bring for both him and Maddox. Ethan was consumed by a mix of emotions as he arrived at school. Each step through the corridors was shadowed by thoughts of the incantation he'd cast the day earlier. It wasn't long before he ran into Maddox in the hallway. As usual, Maddox was at his locker, garnering the attention of the less popular students. It was no surprise to Ethan that with his flowing golden hair, bright eyes, and toned physique, he looked beyond spectacular. But today, as Ethan neared Maddox and his pals on the way to class, something shifted. The two young men's eyes locked, and a shared smile warmed the space between them. Time seemed to pause for Ethan when Maddox waved and winked at Ethan, his friendly glance hinting at more than the fond memory of a friendship in their youth. To Ethan's surprise, minutes later, Maddox graciously excused himself from his group and walked over to Ethan. Hey, dude, Maddox said, an inviting smile gracing his face. His voice was warmer than Ethan had ever heard, his gaze more focused. Ethan felt a strange sort of energy in the air, one that was charged with an indescribable tension. <laughs> uh, Maddox, Ethan responded in his best casual bro voice, trying to keep his voice steady and remain cool. He then watched as Maddox's gaze grew more intense in an exchange that starkly contrasted their usual brief, casual exchanges prior to that day. Maddox engaged Ethan in an energetic conversation, asking about his weekend, talking about school, and laughing in a manner that was both refreshing and unexpected. Their talk was filled with animated energy, a charged undercurrent hinting at something more than friendship. Even after Maddox returned to his friends minutes later, he would glance back at Ethan, giving a small wave. Ethan was stunned. His heart raced as he replayed the encounter in his mind over and over. Maddox's attention, vibrant smile, and lively conversation were all new, exciting, and completely unexpected. 
Had the spell really worked? Did Maddox genuinely find him attractive now? Despite his initial skepticism, Ethan couldn't shake off the feeling that the Book of Spells might indeed be genuine. Emboldened by this success, Ethan was already thinking about the next spell he would cast from his book. The spark of hope within him blazed into a flame. As the school day ended, Ethan rushed home with a new spell in mind. One that could potentially make Maddox fall in love with him. As the reality of his plan set in, Ethan was overcome with a thrilling mix of nervousness and elation. This newfound power was intoxicating, and Ethan found himself getting lost in the promise of a magical future with Maddox. Ethan spent that night consumed by a mix of anticipation and uncertainty. He pored over his book, Mystical Muses, Love Spells from the Ages, finally landing on a page that held the answer to his hopes. A spell to make someone fall in love. Despite the nagging doubt in his mind, if it was ethical, he decided to cast it anyway. Ethan carefully recited the incantation repeatedly, the words hanging heavy in the still night air, a promise of a future he desperately yearned for. Lumina, Ventus, Terra, Ignis, Nexus. The next morning, the energy in Maplewood High School seemed different for Ethan. It was charged with possibility and hope. He kept an eye out for Maddox, who was once again surrounded by his usual group of friends, his laughter echoing down the hallway. But amidst the chatter and laughter, Maddox's eyes found Ethan's. He immediately broke away from his group and approached Ethan with a confident smile. Maddox, usually so collected, appeared slightly nervous. He rubbed the back of his neck, and looked down, gathering his thoughts. Then, looking up at Ethan, with a warm and sincere smile, he asked, uh, Hey, Ethan, this may sound silly, but would you like to go to the prom with me? Ethan was stunned into silence. His heart pounded in his chest, disbelief, joy, and apprehension battling within him. This was what he had hoped for, but hearing it made it all the more surreal. Sure, Maddox, I'd love to, he managed to say, his voice barely a whisper. Oh, it worked! The prom? No one asks anyone to the prom unless they have feelings for them. Could it be that Maddox is now mine? Did I, in fact, make this sexy, studly hunk my love slave? As if it were magic, and maybe it was, Ethan and Maddox began to spend more time together, the connection between them growing stronger with each passing day. It was clear that the spell had woven a magic thread, pulling them closer to each other. Every afternoon, without fail, the two young men would sit together at lunch talk about their classes, and even walk home after school. Ethan was in a state of constant disbelief and joy, unable to shake off the feeling that he was living in a dream. Despite his happiness, there was a tiny voice in Ethan's mind, a nagging thought he couldn't entirely ignore. Was this wrong? Was it fair to cast a spell to force Maddox to love him? It was a question that would haunt him even as he reveled in the newfound connection with the man of his dreams. The long-awaited prom night finally arrived. It was a starry evening filled with the promise of dreams fulfilled and memories made. 
The school gymnasium was transformed into a magical realm of twinkling lights and flowing fabrics. Amidst the laughter and the excited chatter, Ethan stood beside Maddox near the dance floor, his handsome date radiant in a stylish tuxedo. The night was just as Ethan had imagined it, perfect in every way. As the evening progressed, they shared laughs, swayed to the soft music, and even stole a few intimate moments away from the crowd. However, beneath the veneer of joy and normalcy, Ethan wrestled with an increasing feeling of gnawing guilt. It was the spell, he kept thinking. Maddox's feelings weren't genuine. They were merely the product of his manipulation, and he was wrong to force someone to feel something that wasn't genuine. After a particularly romantic slow dance, Ethan led Maddox away from the crowd. The pulsating music faded into a distant hum as they entered the quiet school courtyard. Moonlight bathed the scene in a soft glow as Ethan took a deep breath, gathering his thoughts and assembling what to say. Maddox, he began, his voice trembling slightly. There's something I need to tell you. He paused glancing at Maddox's sweet, expectantly waiting face. I know we've known each other since grade school, and to be honest, I've liked you ever since we were kids. As we got older, you became, well, hotter and more popular than anyone in the school, while me, well, not so much. Anyway, as you know, we drifted apart from each other. Ethan swallowed deeply as he bared his soul, throwing caution to the wind with his confession. I didn't think you'd ever notice me again, so last month I cast a spell. A spell to make you find me attractive. And when that worked, I did another one to make you fall in love with me. Maddox blinked, seemingly taken aback, as Ethan reached into his pocket and pulled out his book of spells. He turned to the pages containing the two love charms he had cast, his finger tracing the arcane words as he showed them to Maddox and pleaded, Please don't hate me. I just... I didn't want to keep the truth from you. I'm sorry I manipulated your feelings. In the hushed silence that followed, Ethan could hear his heart pounding in his chest. The admission was out in the open now, a secret exposed to the chilling night air. He waited for Maddox's response, the second stretching into an eternity. Maddox was silent. His brow furrowed as he processed Ethan's confession. He took the book from Ethan, and flipped through its worn pages carefully. He looked at the two spells Ethan had cast on him, his eyes scanning the faded script. The quiet courtyard just outside earreach from the music of the prom, previously a comfort, now seemed to press in around them with its heavy silence. After a long moment, Maddox's eyes found a particular page towards the end of the book. He studied it, his expression unreadable. Ethan watched him, a knot of dread in his stomach. He was unaware that Maddox had discovered a page he had previously missed. It was a foreword that explained the book's true nature, explaining that this was not a book of spells, but rather a compilation of old folklore and myths intended for entertainment only. Maddox finally looked up at Ethan. His expression was calm, almost relieved. <laughs> you see, Ethan, he began, his voice steady. I had liked you 
even before you cast these spells. Actually, ever since we met when we were much younger. It was only when we became seniors in high school that I was able to muster the courage to talk to you and eventually ask you out. A small smile forming on his lips. Ethan blinked in surprise. He hadn't expected this revelation. Maddox added, I always admired your kindness, intelligence, and your uniqueness. I never got a chance to express it. I was afraid you thought of me as a dumb jock. <laughs> it was only when you started paying me more attention in the hall, it felt like it may be the right time to finally talk to you again and see if you'd possibly date me. As the shock started to wear off, Ethan felt a warmth spreading through him. He wasn't alone in his feelings of affection. Maddox had felt the same way about him. It wasn't the spell he had cast after all. But perhaps this book is magic. And if, in fact, it is... Maddox chuckled as he closed the book gently. I'm more than happy to be under your spell, Ethan. His words hung in the air, sweet and sincere. Ethan was overwhelmed by his mixed feelings of relief, joy, and surprise. This wasn't a dream. It was reality. A reality even better than his most fanciful daydreams. Still overcome by the weight of Maddox's revelation, Ethan watched as Maddox flipped through the pages of the book once again. A playful glint in his eyes as he paused at a particular page, reading the spell aloud, his voice filled with amusement. How about I cast a spell, Ethan? Maddox proposed, a cheeky grin adorning his face. One that invites a special intimate night together this evening? Ethan quickly cuddled close to Maddox as he cradled the other half of the book in his hands, asking, I'm up for trying something new, if you are. Ethan eagerly nodded his head. Maddox laughed. <laughs> How about this one? It sounds, well, really hot and naughty. I say we do it. Are you ready? Ethan almost too eagerly responded. Oh, yes. Maddox winked, signaling he was ready, inviting Ethan to chant in unison. Lumina, Verto, Nexa, Flux, Enthrall. Maddox beamed as his face lit up as he said, I don't know about you, but I can already feel it working. Ethan laughed as he replied, oh, It's working big time for me too. Maddox didn't waste a second, suggesting they leave the prom early and head to the old barn behind his parents' house. Maddox confessed, I took the liberty to set up a little someplace special for us to hang out tonight. Ethan didn't hesitate and leading the way as they slipped out the side door of the building and into Maddox's Ford Bronco. Upon entering the rickety, abandoned barn, a string of subdued colored lights hung over a soft bed of blankets, discreetly tucked in the corner. It was a simple yet romantic spot. A speaker nearby sprung to life as Maddox summoned Siri to play my prom music playlist. It was clear that this amorous encounter was well-planned, and Maddox was well-prepared for what was to come next. As the two men stood tux to tux in the barn, the glowing lights above revealed a self-assurance in Ethan that was lacking before he had found the Book of Spells. Was his newfound self-assurance due to the ancient manuscript of incantations he discovered? Or was it just good old-fashioned confidence? 
Whatever it was, both Ethan and Maddox were enjoying it. Ethan was the first to lean forward and kiss Maddox. The mood was perfect, and Ethan couldn't wait another second to feel his mouth pressed against this ripped stud's face. Maddox's tender, soft lips felt moist and warm on Ethan's mouth. Perfect, and just what he had dreamt of for so many years. He smirked as he thought, This is just what I had fantasized about ever since I first laid eyes on him years ago. Actually, no, it's much, much better than that. Maddox's eyes twinkled under the lights as he simply stated, That was really nice. I've wanted to kiss you for a long time. Finally, tonight, you're mine. Maddox wasted no time slipping Ethan's bow tie off and tossed it to the side of the makeshift bed before them. Maddox admitted to Ethan. You may have recently recited an incantation from a book, but when we were ten years old, I made a birthday wish that you'd be my boyfriend one day. Perhaps it was me that cast the spell on you. <laughs> Ethan smiled, thinking, Oh, this time, I was the one enchanted by Maddox's wish. Well, I'm good with that. Ethan quickly unbuckled Maddox's tuxedo pants and smirked as he teasingly leaned into Maddox's ear and whispered, Well, if that's the case, please allow me to make the final wish for the evening. He continued, I wish both of us would stop talking and just make love already. Maddox was about to make Ethan's wish come true. Well, it seems that magic is no match for good old self-confidence. I'm thrilled that Ethan found the courage to ask Maddox out. Who knows what would have or wouldn't have happened if he never made the first move. I wonder how many steamy stories can be contributed to the simple act of just going for it. <laughs> I know it's worked for me in the past. Now, as cocksure as we all are presently, sadly, I must bid you adieu. Yep, our time has come to an end today, but fear not. Next month, I shall be back to tell you more steamy stories. Later, bro.